Hello everybody, I hope you're doing okay. Now if you've been following me on Strava, you probably noticed that I've been doing a great deal of running at the moment. Well, as you may remember, I sort of got a bit locked up in the left side and then about a week and a half ago, I was doing a treadmill run and I managed to pull my hamstring, my right hamstring, uh, about halfway into the run. So rather stupidly, I carried on a bit longer than I should have done. And then I did a couple of test runs a couple of days later and they weren't great. I did another test run on Saturday and it hadn't really improved. So I've got a physio tomorrow, Thursday. So I thought I decided that I'd just rest up. So I've been on Zwift on the bike and I'll throw in some footage. I've actually finally managed to get my Tron bike. You have to do 50,000 meters of elevation. So I'll be going up the out quite a lot. But I thought from a stats angle, it'd be useful to sort of look back at my training history and see how many other hamstring pulls I've had and see how long it took to recover. Now, I think it's also danger with YouTube that you get in front of a camera and you're some expert on running and injuries and training. Well, in this case, I think it was just sort of my stupidity was just carrying on when I was starting to get a few niggles. And uh, sure enough, I'm having a bit of downtime, but I had been running very well, which is rather frustrating, but sometimes you can get a bit too excited, aren't you? And maybe just push your body a bit harder than it really wants to. So I'm looking very doubtful now for the marathons and perhaps in a way in my head, I've kind of gone out of the idea of it because I've the best part of two weeks off training now starting to feel sort of like I've lost a bit of fitness but I have been on the bike and it'd be just interesting to sort of look, look on uh, training picks and Strava to see actually the fact of the the biking whether it's actually helped to maintain my fitness at all so let's step out of the computer and have a look okay so this spreadsheet is showing all the times I could find on my Strava and from memory when I actually pulled my hamstring such that it was sort of actually stopped me running for a bit so I never actually pulled my hamstring until I was into my 40s and my first one here I was working in central London and I was doing some road intervals on down the Bankment per, as a prelude to some half marathon races and I remember doing about three or four and just literally sort of um, sort of pulled up halfway through one and it was so painful I literally had to stop and uh, when I sort of looked at the back of it it was all sort of bloody and ready but even on that one bizarrely although they did that on the Thursday I was already able to do a run two days later and I reckon I, I was sort of back to normal in 12 days here because I remember doing a half marathon at Stroud I think I did about 78 minutes so uh, yeah, I recovered quite quickly, but um, I was 41 then. So if I then move on to, to the next one, which wasn't for another five years, but then I had four years of basically having problems. I think that was partly perhaps I was also trying to do track at the time, whereas in 2008, I was much more doing sort of road stuff. So it was mainly on my right side, although towards the end of the period, it swapped over to the left. So it's interesting that it wasn't always on the same side. So we've been swapping around a bit. But in 2013 here, I first did it when I was doing 300 meter track reps. And I was soon back in action. But then it wasn't obviously properly healed because uh, I was doing a run. I think bizarrely this one in Hailing Island was the day after I did my part run PB of 17 minutes. Bit of a sore point that never actually broke um 17 but anyway so at the time I remember thinking this about the blue when I looked at this further though it was interesting that I'd done that really good run the day before so maybe just the body was hasn't really recovered and I was just pushing that a bit too much it was a steady I think I'd already run about 10 miles by then uh, not particularly fast but um and that kept me out for basically best part of 24 days but then it seems like I hadn't fully recovered because then I was trying to do some interval sessions down the club on the road and again it wasn't right so I needed a bit more time so overall from when I first noticed it in June to when uh, it was sort of okay again by sort of October that was like best part of 121 days or like four months so just a word of warning to myself that if you get a problem then perhaps uh, it's best even though you don't like it is to sort of take some time off and let it heal up and I think back then I was sort of like mad on Strava segments. So even on easy runs, I was going out and trying to blast a Strava segment somewhere. And I think I carried on that behavior all through this period. So the next year I was doing a half marathon sort of road tempo on an old railway, mainly a tarmac course. And then I think I'd done about half an hour, quite a good pace. I ran about six minute pace. I was a bit faster back then. And then I sort of tweaked it then. And then you can see here that one wasn't too bad but it took the best part of 24 days before I was actually right again and the next year I was out in uh, Portugal or in Olio I was doing some road intervals and I tweaked it at the end of a road interval there and that was in June and then I had sort of like a few more relapses here and it wasn't finally until sort of late late September I thought it was finally cleared up so another instance where that took best part of four months because I was continually sort of trying it and then you know maybe breaking down again and then I think also the period this the left one started to come out in sympathy so I think I had a period where both the left and the right ones were were poor 
but that one took a long time to get rid of. And then the next year, I was doing, I think I was doing it rather stupidly again, I was doing some Strava segments out in the woods and on sort of like a, a trail, and I was doing a sort of a hill rep and twist tweet it then. And it didn't take me long to get back in action, but then as you can see here, through May and June, I was sort of like going for a cycle of you know, get recovering and then sort of pulling it again. So that took a whole month really from May to June to get rid of. Now also before the Seville Marathon, I was doing some intervals here just before New Year's Eve on 28th of December. And I'd done a good 10K interval for about two miles. And I was coming back the other way and realized quite early on in that rep that I kind of tweaked it and I had to jog it back. So that one wasn't too bad because I only had seven days out. But I think it really did hit my fitness because I'd previously done a long run just before Christmas where I'd fallen over. So I was already sort of nursing that. And then I did my hamstring in. Then I think I had a cold as well. So it was the best part of a month off. But I think the difference between now and then is I had a bit longer until Seville. I did a half marathon at the end of January, which was just about okay. And then I think in the last month I got some training in. Whereas at the moment I did this on the... 18th of February and here we are today on the 2nd of March and I've only done basically th three test runs and they've all been really not really proper runs I was sort of like nine minute nine minute 30 miling and um, yeah I think I did about an 830 mile on Saturday then it started to really sort of I would say it actually probably did actually hurt and I actually ended a bit of a run walk so if you're a Strava subscriber, you, you can get these additional fitness metrics. I also think this is quite interesting. I think to a certain extent, your fitness is defined by how much you actually train. So if you run a lot of miles, this measurement here tends to go up. But it actually mirrors quite well what I was actually doing. So here's what I ran around the London Marathon in October. And then that kind of sort of stimulated me to get fitter. I was already done a bit more training before to sort of like get my, see if I could get myself round. But then after that, it kind of gave me incentive. After a short sort of recovery period, I started to build up my miles to sort of 60, 70 miles a week. And I had that um, 55K, 35-mile birthday run there. That was that one around about there. So the, my whole fitness, according to this chart, is trending upwards. And I was definitely feeling a lot fitter. And then I did the Beachway 10K that uh, second dot there so that was kind of on a sort of a mini peak and then after that I started to get these niggles in the left side and then the actual hamstring pull was there so between sort of that beachy 10k and the hamstring pull there I was struggling a bit and my fitness was starting to deteriorate according to this thing and then when I did the hamstring pull it's sort of fallen off a cliff so I've been on the bike a few times of late and it now seems to finally sort of finally sort of steadied slightly I've been doing sort of like an hour rides nothing too uh, strenuous but I did manage to get my trom bike done a few sort of mini sessions up the Alp and stuff and a few group rides so I've been on about sort of three watts per kilograms I think my FTP at the moment is probably around about 220 but I'm almost sort of like just trying to sort of tick over, not sort of like to go balls out. And if we look on training peaks, a very similar metric, this sort of blue shaded graphs is sort of showing a very similar trend upwards to sort of late January. I had that peak in the Beachley Speedway 10K, and then it's kind of been falling down since. So I'm now back to where I was round about in the sort of start of December so you kind of thinking well, if I was training for the marathon I've kind of peaked too early really which is kind of why I'm going off the idea a bit but interesting if I look back to the period when I did it around uh, in the end of 2019 beginning of 2020 before Seville and you can see quite clearly the same sort of thing my fitness had been rising through the autumn and into the winter when I'd been building up my mileage and stuff and then that's basically the very day when I tweaked my hamstring there right at the top of the curve so I was right on the good fitness and I think that's why that first rep I did that day was good and then but I had been doing a lot of miles prior to that so maybe just a bit over fatigued and you can see then when I had to sort of back off fitness went right down and then I managed to sort of salvage things turn things around and then got it back up again and then for the race uh, was sort of end of February and then I think because it all went down because I had a bit of a sort of taper but yeah, I managed to turn that around. But uh, yeah, I think the problem now is that there's not really enough time. So I'm going to physio tomorrow, as I said. So we'll see how it is. But anyway, so I hope you found this little update interesting. Uh, I think the word of warning for me is that if you've got any niggles, like hamstring things, as soon as you sort of uh, feel any sort of 
weakness there or, you know try and sort of ease off and don't do what i've done in the past and just try and carry on until literally you can't run i think a few times if it just goes you know it just goes and you just have to accept you might have to hobble come walk back home but there's been a few times when i kind of think oh it's hurting a bit i'll just carry on for a few more minutes if it feels any better but almost inevitably you sort of know when you've done something and it's not going to get any better by continuing to run on with it although there have been a few times so i've seemingly managed to get out the next day but that seems to be almost counterproductive because that seems to just prolong it and i was just going for a cycle of getting a bit better maybe trying too hard pulling it again and then going on and on so those sort of like couple of four months sort of periods when i was struggling with the injury but it's a sanitary warning that uh yeah you need to be careful and it's also very good to sort of have that training diary notes so i was trying to make a point of adding notes so you can look back on these things and look at the mistakes you've made in the past and hope you can sort of rectify them in the future uh, unfortunately as you get older perhaps the recovery is longer but uh, unfortunately it's just one of those things anyway i hope you found this interesting like and subscribe and all that and look forward to seeing the next one then bye and I'll try. Three one eight.